right, y'all. So this week's episode of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood was given what it was given. So let's give it what we got. What does the cat do? So the episode starts off with Apple Watts meeting with Yo-Yo and Britney B. And we find out that Apple Watts missed out on the song. And the song isn't even out yet. So I'm trying to figure out how did she miss out on the song? Yes, she missed out on the studio session. But baby, y'all live in Hollywood. I'm sure there is some place at some time where y'all can book a studio session so that Apple can get her part done. Like the fact that y'all just canceling out the fact that this girl is going to be a part of the song. It's just baffling to me because it's like, she still can. Zell Swag's event. So Zell Swag is putting together an event that is showcasing his East Avenue line and his listening party for his EP as seen on TV. Yeah, so everybody is rolling in. Everything is cute. Everything is kosher. The show is getting ready to start. No, I think the show starts. The models come out, boom, cack, and then Zell is coming out, has the mic in his hand, is thanking everybody, and then you hear Trisha, get the fuck off me. Who is Trisha? Yeah, I know, bitch. I was asking the same thing. That's that girl Mickey Monday was messed up with that's really married to Akon, one of his concubines or whatever. So yeah, she get the fuck off me, get the fuck off me. And apparently she was talking to A1 security. Now the story is she got a little bit too close to A1 and the security made some space in between she and A1 because baby, he can't be too close to anybody with a vagina outside of his mama and his wife. Okay, so right now, the best bet is for you to, you know, move over to the side. But baby, push came to shove and Trisha ended up having to be escorted out. But she calmed down and she ended up coming back inside. Boom, kaboom, hallelujah. So after all that was done, Zell Swag had a little section for his friends and then he went over to see them. Now, Trisha was with Mr. Ray, who was a part of the crew that was invited by Zell. So he and Trisha were in the section. Zell comes to the section, is hugging everybody, then he gets to Trisha and he like, uh-uh, don't know if I wanna hug you. We gotta feel this out. And he was like, but you can sit down, though. And she was, oh, don't tell me to sit down. Da, 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 da. Now, remember I said that Zell Swag wasn't with the girl or whatever. So apparently they heard what I said. They said, y'all start a vine. Catch me out and talking shit about you. So we need you to show up for the next episode. Okay, yeah, I know what y'all doing. Whatever. So she showed up. She, oh, you need to sit my down. Ain't nobody gonna talk to my man, stupid. I'm like, girl, ugh. Now, this is where shit got crazy, but ain't nobody seemingly talking about it and they not making a big deal about it. Or maybe I just missed it. Um, did Star Divine spit on Trisha? Or am I tripping? Because I could have sworn she, I, I, I could have sworn I saw that. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but I could have sworn that woman spit on Trisha and nobody just said nothing. Everybody was still on Trisha. She disrespectful. She disrespectful. She needs to. I'm like. So again, Trisha is escorted out and has to leave the premises. So Mr. Ray goes and checks on his friend, puts her in a little car, and this bye 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 girl. I'm finna go inside and finish up with my friends, finish up the scene because they paid me to be here. But while he outside, Zell is talking shit about him inside. Or was it that? It was somebody. Some kind of way it was brought up that Mr. Ray alluded to the fact that Ocean may not be a one son. Boom, so you know A1 set off, Lyrica set off, everybody like, oh, what? So all this time, Mr. Ray is outside. Mr. Ray come back inside and they, oh, bitch, what the fuck? You going around town saying this, that, the third, and Mr. Ray like, first of all, what? Okay, yes, I said that, but I was just repeating what I had heard. Bitch, I, I don't know this to be fact. I heard it through the streets. I was just throwing the information out there. Speaking of throwing shit out there, A1 threw a slap. I was just, uh, what you think the consequence is? Kapow! I mean, slapped the dog shit out of him, and then Mr. Right Poor Thing, because he don't fight, he was just like. Like, it was, it, girl, it was bad. It was bad. And he was like, I had been assaulted for the second time. You know, first I was sucker punch, and now I'm sucker slap. What next? I'm gonna be sucker kick? Like, he just. I mean, it was, oh, oh, baby, girl, you gotta learn how to fight or something, bitch, because people are gonna keep beating your ass. 
And so naturally, Mr. Ray was pissed off because he had got sucker slapped on national television. So the next time we see him, he was meeting up with his girls, Brittany B, uh, Apple Ward. Uh, oh, I forgot who else. But anyway, they were sitting down or whatever, and he was like, why well, he want to hit me and check on what I'm saying or what I'm doing. He need to check on his bitch Lyrica who's talking to a whole nother man. Yes, me and Apple was at the hotel with her, and she was on FaceTime, and we already know she was doing more than the FaceTime. Fizz and Mickey Monday. So I guess Fizz and Mickey Monday, they are real close and Fizz respects Mickey Monday because he is not only cool with April and Fizz, he still has a lot of love for Moniz. So Mickey Monday is just good with Fizz. So Fizz brought an A&R from Empire, I guess that's a music record label that's in LA. And the A&R was like, hey, I like what I hear. We making money over here. You know, I want to let you know that we're interested. We're watching you. We see you. And he like, okay, but baby, let me just let you know that everybody who done came with this same dialogue, I <clears throat> so baby, I hear you, but I don't hear you. <clears throat> and then, of course, Fizz get to talking about himself. I'm going to start working on my music because I had put that on hold for the millennium. Bitch, what exactly did you put on hold? I mean, because who was checking for Lil Fizz music? For real. Like, I'm not trying to be funny, but... When was the last... What was the last song you downloaded that was by Lil Fizz? What was the name of it? When did you download it? How often do you listen to it? Because you know if you go on your iTunes, it'll show the number of plays that was associated with the song. So let me know. Just hop in the comments and just list the Lil Fizz songs that you have in your iTunes library right now. But anyway, he was saying that Omarion is the reason why they can't tour overseas. All of a sudden, Omarion does not want to work with Lil Fizz. Wonder fucking why. And I'm just like, here we go. That's why this man is doing interviews saying change the narrative. Like, if y'all gonna be together, be together. Don't make the shit about me. But Omarion, if you ain't mad, then bitch, why not get the bag? Because just like I was talking shit about Fizz, Bitch, I gotta keep a fair game. You ain't selling out no arenas by yourself, Omarion. Post to be was huge for you. But I mean, how long ago was that? When you first came out loving hip hop? Like, cause I, I wanna know what you doing. I mean, yeah, you putting out these EPs and you touring here, you touring there, and you all zen relaxing, you all smiles and working out and shit, but musically, B2K is a hit for all of y'all. B2K is beneficial for all y'all pockets right now, so. And then to make matters worse, the next scene was Jay Boog talking to Paris and Zell about the exact same thing. Omarion do not want to keep touring with Lil Fizz because of this whole April situation. So that's stopping the bag of them touring internationally. And now Jay Boog is mad and is like, bitch, I'm gonna have to have a conversation with Fizz because I need to pay my motherfucking rent. And this whole time I'm thinking, damn, like, Again, that's why this man is talking like this because y'all are making the whole storyline about him. But when Jay Bug went to talk to Little Fizz, he got confirmation and so did we. Baby, the team is saying that is the reason. First of all, you know the nigga ain't fucking with y'all when y'all in a group and y'all grew up as brothers and the only way y'all can contact him is through management. That should tell you right there that he don't really fuck with y'all. And if a management just to buckle down and be like, y'all... <laughs> Y'all already know what's up. This is why he ain't fucking with y'all. He ain't trying to go on tour. And for the man to pass up a bag that could potentially benefit his kids, he more affected than he's saying. He just know how to play it well. Everybody is singing Omarion's praises right now because he hasn't really reacted. He said two sentences about the situation and it immediately went viral. He playing his cards. But I'd be damned if he not affected. Anybody will be. As peaceful as you are, you would still be pissed off if your childhood best friend is currently fucking your baby mama, whether you with her or not. And Fizz, you gotta stop being a fucking dumbass. For you to open your mouth and say, well, he already suspected about me in April and then signed on to do the Millennium Tour, so why he tripping now? I don't, no, bitch, you understand. Cause the whole time it was speculation and you was lying to this nigga saying y'all was friends. Now you going public saying, yeah, we fucking, I'm fucking his baby mama, so what? And you still want the man to sign on and continue to work with you. And, and for you to flip the lens and say, oh, if anybody did that with Monisa, I'd be cool. Because you have no feeling towards Monisa and it's a totally different situation. You don't know how that man feels about his baby mama. You only know what she tell you, which is her side. 
And we all know how many sides of a story that really is. Britney B and her mama. Um, if y'all notice, I really don't talk about a lot of positive things. Not because I want to be negative, but I can't really flip it and make a joke about it to make it interesting. But um, I really did like this scene because despite what I feel about Britney and all that she has going on with all of these characters on this show, I want her to fix her situation with her mom. I wanted Apple to do the same, and I'm glad she did. But Brittany B, I'm proud of you, mama, for saying, you know what? I'm not ready to just jump into this and be like, we're happy and we're singing and we're gonna learn. But I'm willing to try. I'm willing to take baby steps and just hear you out. Maybe communicate, maybe text, you know? I gotta go, girl, because I ain't trying to spend too much time with you, but I'm here, you know? And that is a big step. Kudos to you, Brittany B. And that rap on your yo song, what's that happening? Yeah, you know, I mean, you ain't just no lyricist, but girl, I mean, you ain't trash either. A1 and Mr. Ray. Child, okay. <laughs> I was not expecting him to just be like, hey, what's well, swoosh, oops. What the fuck? You haven't just hit me? What the fuck is wrong? I was not expecting that because, again, I'm thinking... He is non-confrontational. He does not retaliate. He don't do all this shit. I thought him saying what he said about Lyrica knowing it was cameras in his face was retaliation enough. And I want to say, because they made peace, I wonder how this shit going to play off later in the season because he didn't bring up that he said... I mean, he brought up that it happened, but he didn't bring up that he went out and said it. Now, maybe because A1 is in a place that he in with his wife, he not going to care about that shit either, just like he didn't care about the news. But baby, eh. but I'm getting ahead of myself. I know already talked about that boy, so after I talk about this little part right here, we're gonna be done. After the drink being thrown in the face, Mr. Ray was like, I just wanna know why me? You didn't slap Ray J, you didn't slap Safari, I mean, you tried to, but you didn't slap Safari and you did not slap Rockstar. And all of them people was talking shit and just demeaning your wife and all this and all that. But as soon as I say something that I heard third hand, you wanna fucking slap me. Why me? Baby. We all know why you. Now, I've never seen Ray J get into a fight, but I'm pretty sure A1 was not about to chance it on national television. He charged a safari because he just cannot fucking take no more. And Rockstar may be a goofball, but that don't mean he can't kick ass, bitch. He knew what you was about. He knew there was no threat there, so he knew he could slap you and get away with it. Any more questions? But I'm glad y'all made peace. I'm glad you got eyebrows and... I'm just glad that A1 is like, fuck the noise. Fuck the white noise and the blur in the background. All I see is my wife and my child, and I want to be happy, and I want my family. Hallelujah. But y'all, that was Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. It was giving what it was giving, so I gave it what I had. Make sure you are liking, commenting, and subscribing, and that your notifications are on, baby. Until next time, same place, same time.